We're outside today because I was hoping to show you the wind spinner jellyfish in action, but there really isn't very much wind, so <laughs> there goes that idea. But if you'd like to make one anyway, grab your hooks and let's get started. To make a jellyfish, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, stuffing, and eight ply yarn in colors of your choice. Before we start on our jellyfish, there's one thing I wanted to go over. In the materials, I said to use a 3.5 millimeter hook for everything, which you can do like with this guy here. But what I'm actually planning to do in this pattern is to use a 4.5 millimeter hook and some thicker yarn for both the body and the underbelly. All the other pieces I'm still going to be using my 3.5 millimeter hook for, but I'm just changing up the body size a little bit. So you can do that if you want. You can really make this pattern with any yarn weight and hook size. Um, it just depends on how big you want your jellyfish. But if you'd like to stick to the 3.5 millimeter hook, you will end up with a jellyfish that looks a little bit like this. So I've got my 4.5 millimeter hook. I have my thick yarn, which doesn't actually have a size on it. It's just got the hook size, which is 4.5 millimeters. So that's why I'm using the 4.5 millimeter hook. So we're going to begin by making the body and I'm going to start with a magic circle and I'm going to put six single crochet in the magic circle. Round two is six increases and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch from the previous round. Round three is one single crochet and then one increase repeated six times. Round four begins with one single crochet and I'm going to pop my stitch marker back in. In the next stitch we're going to do an increase so that's two single crochet in the same stitch and then we're going to repeat two single crochet one increase five times. After that fifth increase, you should have one stitch left in your round and we're just going to pop a single crochet into that one and take out the cat hair. Round five is three single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round six is two single crochet and an increase, and then a repeat of four single crochet, one increase done five times. And we're going to finish off the round with two single crochet. Round seven is five single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round eight starts off with three single crochet and then one increase. And then we're going to repeat six single crochet, one increase five times and finish off the round with another three single crochet. After we've finished round eight, we should now have 48 stitches in our round. And then round nine is just going to be 48 single crochet. Round 10 is seven single crochet and an increase repeated six times. At 
the end of round 10, we should now have 54 stitches in total. And then rounds 11 through to 15 are each going to be 54 single crochet. For round 16, we're going to do 25 single crochet and one decrease repeated twice. We're going to start off with the 25 single crochet. After the 25th single crochet, we're going to do an invisible decrease. To do that, we're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches, and the front loop is the part of the stitch that's closest to you. So if you think of each of your stitches as a little V, it's a little bit hard to see with this particular yarn, but let's see, bring it up here. You can see little V shapes. The front loop is the part of that, that V that's closest to you, so this section here. And that's what we're going to go under to do the decrease. So we're going to go under the first front loop, under the second front loop. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those front loops. At this point, you should have two loops on your hook. You're just going to yarn over and pull through both of those. So we're going to do 25 more single crochet and then one more decrease to finish this round. Both rounds 17 and 18 are going to be 52 single crochet. Round 19 is 24 single crochet and one decrease repeated twice. Both rounds 20 and 21 are 50 single crochet. Round 22 is also going to be 50 single crochet, however this time we're working in the front loops only. So if you'll remember from when we did the decrease, the front loop is the part of the stitch that's closest to you. So what I'm going to do is work into the front loop for the entirety of this round. But I'm also going to grab another stitch marker and I'm just going to place this in the back loop from stitch number one. So I've worked into the front loop here and I'm placing a stitch marker here just so I don't lose my first back loop that I will be working into later on. Especially with this particular yarn, it can get a little bit difficult to see. So we're going to do 52 single crochet in the front loop only. I've just finished the 51st stitch of, was it round 22? And I'm not doing 52 just yet because we're going to be changing color for round 23. So we'll need this stitch to do that with. Just before we do that, make sure that you can see inside your work, the ring of exposed back loops because we worked in the front loop. So that leaves the back loops free because we're going to need this later on. So if you don't have that ring, you're going to have to frog your work, take it out and redo it. So in the front loop only, so you do have that ring. But if that ring is there, we can continue on. So we haven't done the stitch number 52 yet, our last stitch, because we're going to be changing color. So what I'm going to do is go into the front loop. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So I have two loops on my hook and I'm going to leave that there for now. What I'm then going to do is bring in my next color and I'm going to line this new color up behind my crochet hook here. So behind the two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over in that color and then pull through the two loops on my hook. So that's how we're changing color. For round 23, we're going to work entirely into the new color and I'm just going to get rid of my yellow because I don't need that anymore. And for round 23, we're working in the front loop only again. So the part of the stitch that's closest to us. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create the little decorative waves for our jellyfish. We're going to do two rows of these. So the first row, which is round 23, is going to work in the front loop. And at the end of round 23, we're going to come back, change color again, but then work in the back loop of this round. This round that we're going to work in the front loop is just going to be a half double crochet increase and a slip stitch repeated all the way around. So to do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over first and then go into your stitch. So in this case, we're just using the front loop only again. You're going to yarn over and pull through the front loop and this will leave you with three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. A half double crochet increase is just two half double crochet in the same stitch. So I'm going to yarn over again, then go into that same front loop. I just did my last half double crochet in, yarn over and pull through, have three loops on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. In the next front loop, I'm only going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to go into that front loop yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to pull straight through the loop on my hook. In the next stitch, it's going to be another half double crochet increase. So yarn over, go into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops. And once more, yarn over, go into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So you're just going to repeat this pattern of a half double crochet increase, one slip stitch, all the way around and I'm also working over these two ends but if you would prefer you can weave those in when you're finished just slip stitch into the start of this color change to finish off and we're just going to leave a short tail that we can weave in later and then pull up with your hook and then what you'll want to do is grab your hook and insert that into the back loop from round 23. So we have the back loop from round 22. This is where we placed our stitch marker here. But then the back loop from round 23 is just behind the green or whatever color stitch, uh, whatever color yarn you're using of round 23. So we want to go straight into that back loop. So I'm going to start at number one. You're going to insert your hook into that if you can find it. There we go. And then bring in a third color. So for me, I'm using this multicolored yarn here. And then we're going to join it. So you're going to line up the end of your yarn behind the back loop, yarn over and pull through, and then just slip stitch to join. This round that I'm calling round 24, we're going to do three double crochet in each back loop. So to do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over first, go into the stitch or the back loop, yarn over and pull through. And at this point, you should have three loops on your hook. One, two, three. We're going to yarn over, pull through the first two, and this will leave you with two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through those remaining two loops and that's a double crochet so we're going to do three of those in the same stitch so i've done one yarn over go into the same stitch yarn over pull through have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first two then yarn over pull through the remaining two once more yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the th first two stitch loops, <laughs> not stitches, loops, yarn over, pull through the remaining two. And I'm just going to do that three double crochet in each stitch of this back loop for round 24. If you would prefer to space your frill that it's going to make out a little bit, you can do what we did in the previous round, round 23, which is put either a slip stitch or a single crochet in between your three double crochet in the same stitch. So you'd be doing three double crochet and a single crochet or slip stitch, then three double crochet in the same stitch, single crochet, three double crochet in the same stitch, single crochet, etc., etc. But I want mine to be a bit fuller, so I'm just going to do three double crochet all in the same stitch. Like we did with the 
previous round we're just going to slip stitch to finish off so I'm just going to just slip stitch into the first double crochet we did and leave a tail that we can weave in and that oh I just put fluff everywhere and that is the body part done next we're going to go on to the underbelly for the underbelly I'm also using my thicker yarn and my 4.5 millimeter hook and we're going to start round one with six single crochet in a magic circle and then all we're going to do for this is increase out until we reach 48 single crochet and then we're just going to add an additional round where we increase twice to get to 50. So we're going to do round one, six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet or one increase repeated six times. Round four is one single crochet followed by an increase and then two single crochet, one increase repeated five times and finish off your round with one single crochet. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six is two single crochet and an increase and then four single crochet, one increase repeated five times, finishing off the round with two single crochet. Round seven is five single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round eight starts with three single crochet and then we're going to do an increase. After that, repeat six single crochet, one increase five times and finish off with three single crochet. Round nine, which is going to be our final round, is 23 single crochet, one increase repeated twice. And this should bring us up to 50 stitches. And then when you're finished, we're just going to slip stitch and you'll want to leave a fairly long tail for sewing. Next up, we're going to be making the eyes and the eyes actually consist of three different pieces. We've got the whites of the eye, we have the iris and the pupil, which is a separate piece. I've just sewn this one down. So we're going to make three pieces and for that, you're going to need your eight ply yarn as well as your 3.5 millimeter hook. I'll grab that and I'm going to start with the white. If I can find where I've put the end, here we go. And we're going to start that off with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. And our fourth and final round is just one single crochet, one increase, and then two single crochet, one increase repeated five times, and one single crochet to finish off. And make sure you leave a tail for sewing.
while I've got the white yarn out I'm going to make the pupil as well and that's pretty simple it's just six single crochet in a magic circle that's it we're just going to slip stitch to finish and leave a tail for sewing that on as well For the eye we're going to be starting off in black and we're going to start with six single crochet in a magic circle but you're also going to need a highlight colour so for me that's going to be blue because we're going to use that in round four which is our final round so starting with six single crochet in a magic circle one round two is six increases Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. I'm about to do my final increase, but what we're going to do is change color after this. And we're going to be changing color the same way we did in the body. So I'm going to do the first single crochet of my increase. But then on the second single crochet, I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and have two loops on my hook and just leave that there. I'm not going to finish the stitch in the black. What I'm instead going to do is bring in my highlight color. So again, I'm using blue. And you just want to line up this yarn behind your crochet hook, yarn over in that and pull through, and we're finishing the stitch in our new color. Round four is not going to be worked all the way around the piece. Instead, all I'm going to do is eight single crochet in the new color. So I'm going to work over my ends to secure them. And eight. Now, what you can do from here is you can leave one long tail for sewing on, so in one color. But what I prefer to do is leave a tail of my blue or whatever color you're using to sew on those specific colors. And then also a tail of the black yarn to sew on the black stitches. You can sew your piece on, so if you use one long strand of yarn in one color, you can hide the stitches as you sew. But I prefer just to use the same color yarn for the color stitches when it comes to sewing just a personal preference. So I'm just going to cut a tail for those and I can get rid of these ends as well. And now that the eyes are finished, we can go on to making the legs. When it comes to the legs, we're going to be making four different varieties. We're going to be making one with single crochet, one with half double crochet, one with double crochet, and then we're going to do a big wind spinner leg. So we're going to start with the single crochet one. Now with these legs, you can make as many as you want. I think I'm going to be making five each of these varieties and three each of the spinners or the wind spinners, just because they're a little bit bigger. So that's what I'm going to be making. You can also adjust the length of these by changing the amount that you chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pattern for how to create these. And I'll say, for example, chain 41. But when it becomes time to crochet different lengths, you can either chain less, so you can maybe chain 31, or you can chain more, so you could chain 51. The pattern remains the same. You're just changing the number of chains that you do to begin with, so you get either a longer or shorter leg. So we're going to begin with the white one, which is the single crochet version. And once again, we're going to be using our 3.5 millimeter hook. But you can, if you prefer to use the thicker yarn like we do with the body, you can make the legs from that too. It doesn't really matter. So we're making a slip knot. And then for this one, we're going to chain 51. Okay, starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to place a single crochet and then for these legs, we're just going to single crochet all the way back down the train. Train? <laughs> the chain. So we're going to do 50 single crochet all up. But like I said before, if you want to create a longer layer, you're going to chain more, start in the second chain from the hook and just single crochet back down. If you want to make a shorter leg, you're just going to chain less and start in the second chain from the hook and crochet your way back down. So it's pretty easy to adjust the lengths of these. Mm -hmm. 
and 50. And then what you're going to do is leave a tail so we can attach this to the underbelly later on. And then we're going to go on to the second variety of leg, which is using our half double crochets. For the second variety, we're also making a slip knot, and this time we're going to chain 62. This time we're going to start in the third chain from the hook, and we're going to do one half double crochet in there. And then in the next stitch, or the next chain down, we're going to do three half double crochet in the same stitch. So we're going to go in and do one, go in again, two, and then go in again, and three. Now I'm going to repeat this pattern of one half double crochet, three half double crochet in the same stitch, halfway up the chain. So halfway up this chain, will be 30 stitches or 30 chains and then we're going to repeat that pattern of one half double crochet three half double crochet in the same stitch 15 times when you finish that 15th three half double crochet in the same stitch. We're going to do one half double crochet in each chain for the rest of the chain. So that should be 30. So we worked 30 stitches in the part we just did. So we did one half double crochet, three half double crochet in the same stitch 15 times, which is 30 chains. I'm just going to work a half double crochet in the rest of the chains. And then we're going to leave a short tail for this one too. If you're going to adjust the chain length for this particular leg, what I would recommend you do is chain an even amount. So that way you can easily divide your first or the first part of the pattern and the second part of the pattern where we just do half double crochets down the chain evenly. Our third leg is going to be using double crochet. So we're going to start with a slip knot and this time we're going to chain 73. This time we're going to start working in the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to start off with a double crochet. And then what we're going to do is three double crochet in the same stitch. So I've already done the one. I'm going to go back in and do two and then another for three. And with this leg, I don't actually have a set number of three double crochet in the same stitch that I'm going to doing. I sort of guesstimate anywhere between about a third and half of the way up. So I just work my way along the chain until I stop somewhere between those two points, wherever. So I like to do that because it makes all the legs a little bit different. And then once I hit that point, I'm just going to continue on doing one double crochet in the same stitch all the way down the chain, like I did for the second half of the half double crochet leg. So what you need to do is just determine where you want to stop. So I'm just going to keep doing three double crochet in the same chain until I hit some point between a third of the way up the chain and halfway up the chain. Once you've finished with the three double crochet in the same stitch, so however, so however high up the chain that you want to go, you're just going to do the rest of the chain in double crochet. So that's just one double crochet in each chain. Leave a tail for sewing and then we can go on and make our fourth and final leg. For the wind spinner legs, you're going to need three colours. Um, I'm going to be starting in the white and I'm going to begin again by making a slip knot and this time I'm going to chain 76.
starting in the second chain from the hook we're going to do an increase and we're going to do this in every chain so in every chain we're just going to put a single crochet increase so one two single crochet in each one When you've done your last increase, we're going to cut a tail again. However, this time, we're going to pull up with our hook and we're going to bring in our second color. You're going to take your hook and then we're going to insert it back at the start. So we did that very first increase. We're going to insert our hook into the first one, the first single crochet there. If I can actually get my hook into it, there we go. Bring in your second colour yarn and you're going to line the end up behind your hook, yarn over with it, pull through and then just slip stitch to join. What we're going to do now is a double crochet increase all the way back down the stitches. So that means we're going to be putting two double crochet in every single crochet we did in the last row. Hang on, I'm all tangled up here. There we go. So in each stitch, we're going to put two double crochet. One, and then back in the same stitch for two. And then hop down to the next stitch. One, and two. And we're just going to keep on doing that all the way down the row and I'm also working over my end to secure it. And we're going to finish off row two like we did row one. Just cut a short tail, pull up with your hook and then we're going to insert our needle back into the very first double crochet that we did. There we go, and I'm going to bring in my third colour. And the third colour is going to be the last one that we use, so row three is our final row. And we're just going to join this colour the same way we joined our yarn previously. Just line it up. There you go, line it up behind your stitch, yarn over to pull through, and then slip stitch to join. And for row three, all we're going to be doing is single crocheting down the chain. So we're just going to put one single crochet in at the end of each double crochet that we did in row two. And then we're just going to finish off. And before we attach the legs, you just want to straighten out your wind spinner ones if they need to. So I'm just going to recurl them properly. And then when that's done, we're going to begin putting our jellyfish together. The first thing that we're going to do is to attach the legs to the underbelly. So you want to grab your underbelly and make sure that the right sides of your stitches are facing downwards. I'm going to put the legs on in order of thickest to thinnest. So I'm going to start with the wind spinner ones and they're going to be in the center. And then I'm going to work my way out from double crochet to half double crochet to single crochet. And I'm going to progressively get further out of my underbelly. And the way I'm going to attach mine is I'm going to grab my needle and I'm going to take the end pieces. So I'm starting with the wind spinner one. I'll use the biggest green one. And now with the wind spinner, we've got a few different ends. So I'm going to use them all. So I'm just going to divide it in half. So we've got the row one ends on one side and the row two and three ends on the other. I'm going to thread those two halves together. So I'm threading two and three at the moment. They're both together. And once I've done that, I'm going to figure out where, I'm, where I want my leg. So this leg is going to sit just outside of round one here. And again, with the right sides of my stitches facing downwards, I'm going to push my needle up through the underbelly and pull those ends through. Then making sure they don't pull out, I'm going to go back and thread the ends from row one. And 
row one and the slip knot, I should say. So one of these is from the slip knot, one of these is from row one. Thread those. And then I'm going to jump with the wing spinners, I'm going to jump about two stitches across and push my needle up through the bottom again. So I've jumped two stitches across and I've gone up through the bottom. And then all I'm going to do is tie these two ends off tightly together, or rather the two halves of the ends. So I'm going to grab the ends from row one and my slip knot, grab the ends from rows two and three, and then tie them together. I do this about four or five times nice and tightly. If you would prefer, you can sew these ends in through the backs of your stitches, but I find this way to be quicker and it is still fairly secure. And I'm just going to trim the ends. You don't have to worry too much if this is messy because this is going to end up inside the jellyfish and no one's going to see it. So that's how we attach the legs. I'm going to attach the other two wind spinner legs in the same way. And again, I'm going to put them sort of around the center piece here. When the wind spinner legs are on, you can just go back in and snip off or weave in any of the ends that you worked over. And then when that's done, we're going to attach the next thickest legs, which are the double crochet legs, which I have done in green. And we're going to attach them in the same way. The only difference being that with these legs and the other legs too, we only have two ends to work with. So we have the end from our slip knot and the tail end that we cut when we'd finished crocheting. So we're just going to do the same thing. You're going to insert one end into your needle. You're going to insert that up through the bottom of your piece. So again, the bottom is the right sides of your stitches. Go back in and thread the other side. And this time, instead of jumping two stitches across, because these pieces are narrower, I'm only going to jump one stitch across. And then when that's done, just tie those off nice and securely. And that's all you're going to do for all the rest of the legs. So the double crochet legs, the half double crochet legs, and the single crochet legs. Alrighty, now that all of our legs are on, we're going to sew the underbelly to the body. So what you want to do is grab your tail end from the underbelly and your needle. And I'm just going to thread that. And then what we're going to do is sew these stitches to the exposed front loop that we left in round 22. So if you're like me and you left a stitch marker in round, no, stitch one, not round one, stitch one, that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to line up my end here with that. And so I'll go into that back loop and I can remove the stitch marker now. Don't need that anymore. And I'm just, oh, get out of there. There we go. And I'm just going to sew each stitches together. So we had 50 stitches in our final round of the underbelly and there should be 50 exposed back loops. So we're just sewing one to one. Go in there again. And what we're also going to be doing is stopping at about three quarters of the way to add the stuffing to the body. Uh, we'll just sew this together for now. All right, now that we've sewn on about three quarters of the underbelly, it's time to add the stuffing. Mm -hmm. 
Then when all the stuffing's added, we're just going to finish, I oh don't know, my hands <laughs> caught in all the legs. We're going to finish by closing this hole. So we're just going to finish our sewing. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're just going to finish our sewing. And then to finish off, we're just going to weave this end back in through the body. And before we go on to do the eyes, what we're also going to do is just weave in these ends from our color change rounds. Our final step is going to be to sew on the eyes, but before I do that, I'm going to sew the pupil to the colored portion of the eye. So I'm going to grab that and I want to position the pupils in the same spot. So I'm going to use my first one as a guide. And then using the leftover yarn from the tail, I'm just going to add a little shiny spot here. And then I'm just going to weave the end in through the backs of my stitches. Now that that is finished, what we're going to do is first grab the whites of the eye. And you'll need your pins for this bit as well. And you're going to pin that in place. And the second one. And then before you sew anything down, I'd recommend grabbing your colored eyes, the colored parts, and placing them on as well. So I'm placing mine at the bottom of the white piece. So the bottom of the colored piece covers the bottom of the white piece, as well as the inside of the white eye. So my eyes are going to be sitting like this. See how they look? And if you need to move both pieces, so both the colored piece and the white piece, you can do that first. But if you're liking how they sit, so I like the distance between mine, take off the colored pieces. And then we're going to sew down the white pieces. And then when the whites are sewn down, you can line up the colored irises. So when they're pinned down, we're going to sew those on as well. And that's going to be our last bit of sewing for today. However, if you used one uh oh <laughs> if you used one yarn end you're going to sew the entire eye on with that no matter which color it is however if you're like me and you used two different ends one for the colored part and one for the black you're going to sew down your colored stitches in that tail end and your black stitches in the black tail end There we go, our jellyfish is all finished. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this pattern. If you did, consider subscribing and I will be back next week with a new one. <laughs>